Tom Coronel has called it a day. He's come round the Grand Prix loop and straight into the pit lane. Broken car, he doesn't even get out onto the Nordschleife. They jump at Flugplatz. The interesting thing here is if the Larders in free practice and qualifying have been super, super fast, great speed, top speed of any car down the main straight. So if they can get on the move, get on the back of these uh, the, and get some good slipstreaming, we, you know, with a bit of luck, we can see them move forward. Around Arenberg and down this huge plummet into the foxhole. Further back, Jan van Lagen on the attack. He's already disposed of Tom Coronel. Now he's charging after the Chevy of Gregoire de Moustier. And Matt, this is real heart in your mouth descent here because you're absolutely attacking with every ounce of speed you've got. Yeah, we just exited Berwerk. This is down into the foxhole. Car goes into full compression. The driver will submarine into the seat at the top into a section of S-Benz here. This is the Adenauer Forest section. Tight and twisty, sweeping from one side to the other, and Van Lagen clearly with more speed, but you try and find a way past here. It's all but impossible. And then they come to the next descent. Oh, looks like we got Huffy out as well. Yeah, Huffy has also come straight back into the pits. Now he had an engine change after a flywheel and clutch failure in qualifying. He didn't go out in the morning warm-up and has not started the race effectively. He and Tom Carnell both in the pits. A long descent down now, down through um, Metzgetfeld and Cullenhard, but it's yep. very difficult to overtake down this section. Plunging again downhill through the hills and valleys of the Eiffel Mountains. And again, look at all the fans camped around the circuit. Some massive camping grounds here. Dropping way down to the lowest point, Breitscheidt, and then starting the climb back up, Exmüller. And this long run up. So this is down into Breitscheid. The road goes under the track just there. And that is the lowest point on the track. From here, we start to climb. And this is Matt very steep, as steep as the exit of Eau Rouge out at, at Spa. Absolutely. And we've got Van Lagen, who's an absolute master. He knows the ring like the back of his hand. De Moustier in front of us is a newbie. So it's new territory for him. He's got a limited amount of laps on here. So. Uh, He's still going to be feeling his way around tentatively. Jose Maria Lopez, the race leader. Sebastian Loeb giving chase, but where's Ivan Muller? Muller was much closer to Loeb than this earlier on, and he's just in shot, so Muller is losing a little ground. But Lopez needs to be a good two seconds in front when they get to the end of the lap and the long straight. Norbert Mikulic is with them, and closing in further up is the fifth-place card, Queen Huama. On board with Jan van Lagen, chasing, chasing, chasing. This is the battle for 13th. He's got a run on John Phillip, on uh, Gregoire de Moustier, and he's got the speed to go by. The Larder, the fastest car down the back straight. All the way around the outside yeah. as well. And in front well, as they go around into Vipperman. He has confidence, he knows where he's going, and he's got the speed in the car. Rob Huff must be ruining the problems he's having here because he loves racing on this track and he believes that the oh, has got real potential here. Dropping into the legendary carousel, much rougher than you would think, and Van Lagen pops out. There is Lopez and Loeb, your lead pair, and the gap between the mat is about a second. The one good thing is Michelitz is staying in, in contact with that lead trio of Citroën, so if we get onto the straight and he can start putting up some slip streams, he could, he could maybe put him under a wee bit of pressure as we get back onto the Grand Prix circuit. Yeah, through the dips at Wippermann, and then Eschbach over the brow, Brunchen, and off down to Flansgarten. This is a very complex section. Almost every turner is a corner has a blind turn in, or it's over a blind brow. Cars drifting around the corner, slipping and sliding despite all their aerodynamics. And Matt, all of that painted graffiti on the road certainly changes the grip level as soon as the weather changes. Uh, absolutely, they can't clean it off, so it's just down to tire wear and, and weather to, to try and get, you know, get rid of it. But um, we actually saw on the Grand Prix circuit there was a sort of lack of fans, but that's because they're all out, spread in 26 kilometers of woods, and, and they are there in the tens of thousands. Yes, they are. And you can smell them as you go by. The barbecues are going constantly from early in the morning till late at night, as is the music and the air horns and the odd beer, obviously. It's a fantastic atmosphere out there.
Absolutely fantastic. Best I've ever seen. Through Flansgarten and up to the small carousel. Valente definitely putting on the pressure now. Yeah, Thiago Montero. This is the battle for eighth place, I believe. There's the mini carousel. Tom Chilton right behind. You can see, I think it's Stefano Daste in front of them. Daste managed to elude most of the banging and crashing in the first corner. Valente's going to be ruining that uh, first few corner. Now, he was just sort of too excited. Here comes the slipstream. This is out of dotting a her. This is a mile long straight, and Montero is just being reeled in. He's dead in the water. Valence got the overlap and goes by. But like up the Kemmel straight, Matt, if the Honda tucks back in, it will pick up speed. But look at Chilton coming from behind. He's going to come by well. Montero any moment. Chilton's getting a double stream. Yes, he is. Into Flat the tier garden. through the left hander at Antonio's Busher into the tier garden and then very hard on the brakes. Is Chilton there? Has he got enough room? As they get into Hohen Ryan, he didn't get by Montero. The speed he was closing then, I thought he was going to be through, but they obviously just uh, ran out of road as they're moving into the tier garden. Well, Lopez stayed in front of Loeb and Muller. Mikulic in fourth has been caught by the Honda, a Tarquini and the Sijin of Mar, and they've been slipstreaming together. Then Benani, and then this battle, Stefano Daste ahead of Valant, Montero and Chilton. Well, spots of rain on the track. I'm not sure where, whether they're in the pit lane or elsewhere. Nothing on our window, but then it leans inwards, so they wouldn't be. Yeah, we have got a report of rain somewhere on the track, but the drivers are probably getting a similar message that, well, that there's rain somewhere, but they're not too sure where. I imagine that'll be coming from Ben in the pit lane, actually, as much as from any of our camera guys out around the track. The Grand Prix circuit provides a higher level of grip. It's a modern, oh. more, more, much more on Nashville. Valon drifts Ballon's out wide. Done. Is it a little slippery down at the Shell Oil's hairpin? Thiago Montero seizes the opportunity to go back past. So Montero retakes oh. ninth and Valon taking too much curb and that's gone and it's not coming back. And he's in the barriers. Well, broken right rear suspension, possibly broken right front suspension as well. And Matt, of all the places to go off, the Grand Prix circuit is a tough enough track when you get it this wrong. Looks so like he just took too much curb on the inside. Yeah. Obviously wet, but maybe a bit damp. Big mistake. After all the promise he showed in qualifying. Philippe de Corsac looking very disappointed, and so too will be Hugo Vallant. Well, now he's got to try and creep the car back to the pit lane, give the team as long as possible to fix it. No, don't abandon it there. Drive it back. There's not much repair time when you've got that much damage. There is water in the air as well the helicopter i'm not sure where it's picked it up but it's look, lopez That's kicking up the dirt on Hudson the inside back, yeah now it's going to be tricky for the lead guys now they're already through hockenheim michelitz look, seems like the second group is now closing in on the lead group yeah a little bit stefano dasty in with them there is Montero, Chilton briefly held up, I think, by the moment in front of him. Slippery surface flags means there is rain here as they leap over Flugplatz. Well, what you don't want is a track with variable grip when you're on slicks, Matt, because you're going to get somewhere and suddenly find that you've arrived there at the same speed last lap, perfectly safely. This lap, it's too quick for the conditions. These lead, these lead cars are going to be having to drive defensively, but then that's going to allow the others to close up on them. So it's, it's almost a question of who blinks first. Where performance matters, you'll find Total Quartz. Yap van Lagen chases Sabine Schmitz up, and as they swing left onto the full Nordschleifer, you can see how much of a tight double left-handed corner it is as you then drop down into the Hatzenbach, starting this 25 or continuing the 25 kilometer lap. And you can see the roads twisting and turning around the valleys here, very similar in nature to this Nordschleifer circuit. You just don't go quite as quickly. 
not even remotely as quickly. Well, Martin, with, uh, with Montero in the pits now and uh, the other ca early casualties we've had, you might get your prediction of seeing Sabine Schmidt into the top ten. Yeah. Sneak into the top ten. Right, I thought she would probably have the potential to do so. Uh, her disadvantage here, though, is she's basically driving a car that's back to front compared to what she's used to. She's got Jat van Lagen all over the back of her and Gregoire de Moustier as well. The young man... Is that Jean Philippe, actually? No, uh, it's... Uh, oh, it is Philippe, yeah. I beg your pardon, yes. Van Lagen's yeah. definitely on the attack now, though. Yeah, he is, absolutely. And Cornell's in the pits as well. Uh, we're well, in and out, so he's gone back out and come back in. And there you can see tape holding the bits and pieces together. These cars now, we were saying this morning, you just cannot make any contact in the cars. They're so, uh, so aero-dependent and they damage so easily. The old days of all metal wings and being able to rub metal, those are long gone. This section is incredibly fast. This is 160 miles an hour through the countryside on what would barely pass as a B-road in the UK. It's looking to the inside into Arnberg and didn't quite have enough of a run. He could have stuck his nose in further, but that would have resulted in them both going off. And there's no mileage in that. Down the foxhole, absolutely flat to the boards, no lift through here. Matt, when you're driving this in a road car, you know, your first time round, you're just desperately willing yourself to hold the throttle down, but too terrified to do it. it the, the speed comes at you so fast there. It's the way the cars are in compression. The Chevrolets were, were struggling with the, the jumps through the circuit and the, and the bottoming out in, yeah. in the compressions, like at the bottom of Foxhole. They were crashing out too hard and they've been damaging the cars because they are quite fragile pieces of equipment. So um, the Citroen is obviously built like a, a, a rally car, as you were saying earlier. It's just, it's a modular, they've built it, been crashing into each other to test it and... Um, I think you're exactly right. I mean, they built it tough like a rally car. They built it to be serviced quickly and, and repaired quickly like a rally car. And they've hired a rally driver and a rally team to run them. And yet, Jose Maria Lopez, who perhaps might have been one of the world's great tarmac rally champions, had he not turned into a, a single-seater racing driver early in his life, is the man who is making best use of it. He leads comfortably from his teammate Sebastian Loeb and Ivan Muller. To put, it, to put it into context how fast these TC1 WTC cars are going, they would be in the top 20 of the main grid for the 24-hour race with all the 600-horsepower GT3, yeah. Aston Martins, Bentleys and everything. So the, the speed these cars are carrying through the con corners is immense. Yes, without the safety nets of the ABS, the traction control and everything else. So they're doing <laughs> these cars up. If they haven't got eyes like saucers at the end of the lap, then I, I don't know quite what's going on with them. Looking at Norbert Mikulic and Gabriele Tarquini, fourth and fifth. Then Quinn Ma, the multicolored car of that trio behind is Mehdi Benani and the black one, Stefano Daste. That's sixth, seventh and eighth. Ninth, Tom Chilton. And in 10th place onto the lap, Sabine Schmitz. There is the number two car. I beg your pardon, there is the uh, number 37 car of Jose Maria Lopez, ahead of Sebastian Loeb. Looks like uh, Michelitz and Tarquini have shaken off Marne. Yep. Uh, just a fraction now, to, just to give themselves some clear air, or maybe that's going to allow Tarquini to focus on Michelitz for maybe one last one last push down the long straight. Well, Norby is not far enough in front of, in front of Gabrielli for dotting a her, is he? When he comes onto the straight, Gabrielli will just hoover him up. So Norby has got to find something in the next 20 kilometers because the last two kilometers are going to be hell on earth otherwise. Jose Maria Lopez, Sebastian Lowe, and then Ivar Muller through Vipperman. Climbing through Eschbach and up to the double right at Brunchen. The graffiti thing on the, on the circuit is quite a recent thing. It's only the last 10 years, isn't it, that it's oh, really know. sort of gone mad. Uh, yeah, it, it's especially, yeah, I mean, now especially. 15 it, years ago, it wasn't anything like this, and then it suddenly sort of got to be almost a craze. Yeah. And there's more and more and less and less tarmac visible every year. On board with Gabrielle Tarquini, chasing hard.
Yeah, it's great going in, in car with Gabriele. You can see how hard he's having to work in there. Oh, and you can hear, Civic. we were on board in the first, that's the first jump there at Flans Garden, but even before you got that, you heard Gabriele's wheels clear the ground and roo, 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 as, as the uh, revs rise, as you momentarily lose traction. There's the second jump in Flans Garden. And Ma has now shaken off Bonani, and he's trying to close as they close in on Muller. Muller is suddenly very much more in Mehdi Bonani's sights. So what's going on with Ivan Muller? Through the mini carousel, and they are closing hand over fist on the Frenchman. This is really dangerous for Muller as they go through the rider Galgenkopf, then dotting a her and the straights down to the finish line, basically. Has Muller got a tyre issue? Obviously, like Montero well, has one, it's Lopez. very easy to pick up a punch around there. Let's not watch the leader. Let's not worry about where he is, because there's a battle for the podium coming up behind. Jose Maria Lopez leads the race. This is Norbert Michelis and Gabriele Tarquini. They are closing on Ivan Muller into the closing stages of the lap. They're less than two kilometres from the flag. Jose Maria Lopez into the braking area for Hohen Ryan for the final time. Behind him in second place is Sebastian Loeb. Lopez is going to win going away. Loeb in second place. But what about Ivan Muller, Norbert Michelis and Gabriele Tarquini? Where are they going to end up? Victory in this historic race on the Nordschleife. It goes to Polman Jose Maria Lopez. Sebastian Loeb will take second. Muller shakes them off at the end for third place. Norbert Michelis couldn't get close, but here, Gabriele Tarquini has been passed by Quinn Huamar for fifth. So Lopez wins again. Well, again, the camera didn't quite show us the bit that was entertaining at the end of that. I wonder what's happening further back for 10th place. Tom Chilton is across the line. Sabine Schmitz and Jat van Lagen should be coming towards us. And it is Schmitz who crosses the line in 10th, Van Lagen in 11th, John Philippi in 12th spot. Well, if I'd had a pound on that, I'd be a pound better off now. <laughs> and there's Gregoire de Moustier who comes across the line in 13th spot. Targa Montero in the pits, Tom Coronel in the pits, Rob Huff in the pits, Hugo Valon's car at the side of the track. And Jose Maria Lopez does it yet again. Yeah, it's a shame we didn't see the final Ferrari between uh, Tarquini and Mar, but um, four Citroens in the top five. It's, uh, it's quite a dominant statement again from them and Lopez. Business as usual, isn't it? Well, I said before the start, if they didn't have all five Citroens in the top five, they'd been doing something wrong, but... Bonani made a good start and then through no fault of his own got clattered off. Ma got bounced out a bit as well. So in the end, I think they did a pretty good job. But the best job of all by Jose Maria Lopez. A very happy Citroen team, a very happy Jose Maria Lopez. Top three in race one from Citroen. Lopez, Loeb and Muller. Norbert Mikulic, fourth place, the best of the rest in his Zengo Motorsport Honda. And then Quinn Ma in his factory Citroen getting by Gabriele Tarquini on the run to the final corner on lap three here at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. It's been a while since we've had World Touring Car races in Germany. Oschersleben was a uh, familiar location for a number of years, but this... Uh, Neil, this place is something entirely different. This is, like uh, Derek Bell said, if you win here, you know, man, you're damn good. Well, this boy is damn good. Another scary little stat. You, you know, by uh, Pachito winning this first race here at the, at the ring, that means he's won every race won so far this season. That's, uh, that's quite a statement, isn't it? It is. Some very happy Argentines. And down there is Alex Legui, so we'll hear from Jose Maria Lopez just as soon as we can get his helmet off him.
there we yeah. have it. Pachito Lopez, you are the winner of race one here at the Nürburgring. Congratulations. What a race. Fantastic. I mean, I felt very good. The car was great. Thanks to the team. Uh, as I always say, but I will never get tired to say it. Uh, thanks, Citroën, for the opportunity to, uh, for us, you know, to, to, to be this competitive because the car is, is fantastic. Then I think I, I've been able to feel very, very confident here and I really enjoyed the race because I was driving like in a tunnel uh, through the, the hills and it's a amazing circuit. Honestly, I think it's something I wanted. <laughs> And you've gone through all of that, and now you're just about to get back in the car and ready for race two. What, what's going through your head? I would like to be in the podium, honestly, but the, this is the way it is. Now we have to get ready, speak with engineers, try to, to do a completely different race from the back, yeah. trying to arrive, think on the championship. I think the most important is done. Um, I hope uh, I, can, I can go through the, the field safe, safety and try to, to get some points and pull out a little bit more in the championship. I have no doubt. Petito, well done. Well, you know, for other days, it's all about the championship. It's all about the points. And of course, you need to think about that at every race. But Matt, you know, he's going to go away from here going, I, I raced on the Nürburgring and I won it in a World Touring Car Championship race. And there's only one person so far in history that's been able to say that. He's been so ultra fast all weekend and super smooth. No mistakes, touch wood, so far. You know, it's going to be, see, you know, Loeb and Muller are going to be starting in front of him on the grid, and they're going to want to put him under pressure, and they're going to want to make him work for every inch. So it's going to be, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great race, too, here at the Nordschleife. performance matters, you'll find Total Quartz. The FIA WTCC is delivered by DHL. Yokohama, your tire. The FIA WTCC is brought to you by JVC Kenwood. Cars being repaired, ready for race two here at the Nordschleife. And Quing Hua Ma's Citroen Cielise is being taped up. Just criticizing the fact that they're using black tape on white bodywork now, Matt. They're going over that with white tape to make it look better. So uh, belt and brace is being used by Citroen. That's proper rally mechanic in well, maybe Well, we, maybe we've finally spotted a, a chink in the Citroen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think they've got most things covered. They had white gaffer. They were just putting in an undercoat of black to hold it all together. <laughs> well, you know, and on this track, who knows what the vibrations, the jumps, the bounces, and the high-speed aero, and there's a lot of high-speed aero here, is going to do to a single layer of gaffer. Ma starts in sixth with uh, Sebastian Loeb right behind him, teammate Ivan Muller ahead and in front of him, and, of course, on the row behind them, Jose Maria Lopez, our race one winner. Still no sign yet, no word from uh, Campos Racing as to whether Hugo Valence car will return to the track after substantial damage in race one. Matt, you have to suggest, since it was stuck out on the Grand Prix track, actually, it, there's not much time for it to be repaired. It'd be a great shame. I mean, at least it's on the Grand Prix uh, circuit rather than out, out in, the, in the woods somewhere. Well, maybe we'll get a camera down to Campos Racing to see the state of that car as everybody heads out, though. Let's hear from Tom Chilton. Gaffer tape for Tom Coronel, but he will be going out for race two. Tom Chilton, however, is still standing here, and there's an awful lot of water coming out of your car. What happened? Uh, yeah, one of the reasons I can't keep going is because the gravel has gone through the radiator and punched a hole in it because Valente came off on his own as usual and it's it's ripped gravel about 100 miles now through my radiator and uh yeah i ran 15 minutes in the race with no water in the engine to finish and so your engine now engine needs to be checked um rml before moscow uh, but definitely can't fix it in 10 minutes for the next race so absolutely gutted I don't even know what to say, Tom. That is just horrendous news. What, uh, what, you, know, you mentioned earlier on, I spoke to you, that you guys 
maybe didn't have extra parts. But where does that set you up for Moscow? Yeah, I don't think there's any spare engines. <laughs> I think maybe there's one for everyone, so if I use it, there's no more spares. Um, but it depends how bad the engine is. If it's not too bad, it's okay. If it's bad, then it's a problem. Um, but I'm just very, very frustrated with the whole weekend, to be honest. I ended up putting last year's uh, setup back on the car for FP right, warm up this morning, and I was P1 by two and a half seconds to Tiago and Sebastian Loeb. And I'm a bit frustrated I hadn't run that all year till now because I think our winter testing led us astray because of the temperatures. And um, I will be back on the top step shortly, but it's just very frustrating that we're here in front of you know quarter of a million people. I got I'm waving the helicopter down the street. It's a pretty cool event, and I wanted to be on the podium, not sat in the pit lane watching everyone else. But I can cheer my teammate on. He's starting pole uh, second for race two. Thanks, Shelley. Well, you could see the hole in the headlight, Matt. Uh, you know he was properly scattergunned by the gravel from Hugo Valence, massive off. So Tom Chilton will not start. Tom Carnell, his Roal teammate, is on the front row of the grid, though. And you can see Tom's tweet. He got uh, contact on lap one, and hopefully he will be able to start P2 on the race two grid and make the most of that. Still no word on what's happening with Hugo Valant. Uh, he should be ninth. Chilton should have been 11th on the grid. So Graham Chilton there, Tom's dad. And, uh, yeah, Chilton's just explaining about the gravel being fired back. One, it's been, you know, you're approaching it at, at 150 odd mile an hour and it's been fired back off a spinning wheel in front of you. So it's the closing speed of that gravel. It's like being in a, in a shot blaster with um, with rocks being flying at you and, yeah. and, and the car. So it will go straight through an aluminium radiator. And, and you know, we just saw, you know, those uh, the headlights. They're uh, they're tough and perspex. So yeah. they're you know they're, they're tough pieces of kit to survive in in the rigors out there. And it's just gone, uh, just shattered it. And of course, you know, the other thing is they do have grills in front of the radiator. We often see them covered with grass, and that's precisely to stop stuff going through the radiator. But if the gravel is big enough and moving fast enough, well, it's going to go through the radiator and anything else in its path. You know, a disastrous start for you there, terrible race, and uh, also not so good for some of the other drivers in the pack as well. How, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling really, really disappointed. I mean, uh, my start was bad, but I think all the Chevrolet had a bad start, so it's something we were working on, and, and clearly it was not, not the right way. Um, we did some uh, just adjustment on my clutch uh, after the after the warm-up this morning, and I, I had lost all sensibility on the on the pedal. So it was either I would uh, stall like I did uh, getting up the grid, or I would have so much wheel spinning that it was just uncontrollable. Um, so I think it was maybe four, fourth or fifth uh, by the the first corner, and then Matt hits me because he was the inside and uh, obviously they have a tank with Citroen so he hit me he knew he was not gonna have anything and uh, it would ruin my race so that's that's the way it goes I'm sure he's not gonna get a penalty for that because whatever Citroen does on track they never get a penalty so yeah that's that's the way it goes I guess but uh, what can I say you know it's uh, it's a real shame because uh, the, it's awesome to, to drive around here and uh, and then uh, my, my car was completely well, all broken down. I had my, my steering wheel was completely um, to the to the right. So I had a lot of, lot of understeer and a lot of oversteer, depending on, on which corners, and it was just uh, very hard. Uh, I might want to apologize to Norbert Michaelis for nearly putting him in the pit wall at the start before focusing on what other drivers did. And Tom Chilton. And Tom Chilton. But yeah, again, you know, looking back at that incident on the Grand Prix track, I did wonder when we saw it again whether actually his rear suspension was broken as it happened because the car got really sideways and really out of control in, an, in a position where it really shouldn't have. So maybe it was just snapping away from him unexpectedly. However, he won't start. Tom Chilton won't start. So ninth and 11th on the grid, a big gap in front of Rob Huff's larder. 
They head away from the grid. Final formation lap. And lots of wheel spin behind from uh, Sabine Schmidt. So they dive into the first corner. And away we go, out onto the Grand Prix circuit. Thiago Montero escaping from the start, but look at right behind him with the Y on the roof, Ivan Muller, third Gabrielli Tarquini, fourth Tom Coronel. Everybody just about escaped. Who's on the dirt there? Is that Lopez going by Ma or Ma going by Lopez? It's one or the other of the Citroens. Martin, I don't know what happened there because, uh, like, we're catching us out with the start. But wow, it's all the guys, formation lap, all the girls with the, the lights. all the girls with the pit boards were just running off the grid after yep. the start. So there's something, <laughs> something's gone on there. Well, I'm glad it wasn't just me. I think the race accidentally started there somehow. And uh, Sabine Schmitz is at the back, but out front is our pole man, Thiago Montero. So the race has been declared wet, and we're going to find out now why, aren't we, as they head out onto the Grand Prix. There's a big Sitchin battle going on behind, and I want to see more of that as we get down uh, to the end of the Grand Prix circuit. Well, the timing screen is well, taking Rob a Huff, long while to well, catch it, up. It'll so. be the end of the first sector. Loeb is in front of us, so he got shuffled right to the back of the pack. So Lopez in front of him, or is it Ma? No, there is... Ma, then Lopez, then Loeb on the outside, and in comes Huff. Oh, makes contact with Loeb. That's a short, short track to break something on the ladder, I'm afraid. Uh, That's like making contact with a brick wall. Another car we've lost is Michelitz. Where's Norby then? No sign of. No, no, sign, no of sign of Norby. So did he not make the grid? Did he not make it off? We can't see the grid from where we're sat. There is Norby crawling round, no. crabbing, broken rear suspension. Now, is that a first corner incident from this race or a legacy of the last race? Well, well I don't know. <laughs> race one that. was entertaining. Race two, not quite sure what's going on at the moment. Your tire. Right at the tail of the field, Sabine Schmitz having a dust up with Gregoire de Moustier, and de Moustier will be learning an awful lot here from the black car in front of him. And Stefano Daste came by us stone last. He's in 14th place. Norby in the pits, joining Valence and Chilton in the list of those not on track at the moment. Valence and Chilton didn't start. And Norby retired after the first couple of corners on the Grand Prix track, and now... Was that Lopez sneaking through Lopez? Yeah, the introductory battle of the Citroens, or was that Lopez going by Ma? Uh, let's see, Daste's coming in with damage on the car. The splitter has dropped. Looks like he has run into the back of somebody. That it certainly was, hasn't been done by Stane, It was it? Lopez trying to go by Ma, and he's still trying to go by Ma. Onto the Grand Prix, uh, up to the top of the Grand Prix circuit. They come. And now swinging out left. <laughs> Mars offline. Here's a chance for Lopez. Mars somehow gets the nose tucked back in as they drop into Brunchen. But the big S is for Seb Lope behind. And then Coronel and Huff. Now Coronel and Huff somehow are going to have to try and stay in the wake of this trio of Citroens because the white cars are fast enough to maybe catch Bernardi and also drag them along with them. The problem for Lopez is if he tries to concentrate on Martovic, one, he's going to be hurting his tyres, but Loeb's going to seize any opportunity he can behind him. Yeah. He should get a good draft from here. We get on the run down to the flip flats. It's a very yeah. long, fast section. So he'll have a big outbreaking opportunity at the bottom into Armberg. Bernani could be on the podium here. He's in four. Oh, they're, getting some good the there now, they? they're getting a lot of air there now, aren't they? On board with Lopez, chasing Quinn Huama. And there's our helicam right overhead. Here they come. Ma, Lopez, Loeb, and Lopez has shaken off Loeb just enough, maybe. Oh, Ma, very wide, and Lopez goes very deep on the inside. And the result of that is down into Arnberg. He's all over him. Half all over Coronel as well. 
We know the Lada was the fastest car in the speed traps on the back straight at the end of the lap in the free practice session. So Huff, if he can stay tucked up behind Coronel for the remaining 20 kilometers, may get a chance to breeze by him. Oh, and Coronel's car looks a little bit of a handful. He backed off the wing before race one. I wonder if he's put it back up again. I don't think it looks like it. He went for a bit less drag, and that means it's a bit more twitchy in the fast corners of which, Matt, there are more than a few. You'd have to say, thank goodness he did back the rear wing off. Otherwise, where would he be in a straight line compared to the others? There's your race leader, Ivan Muller. Thiago Montero in second. Gabriele Tarquini in third. And Muller is starting to pull away from the two Castrol Hondas behind as the red, white and green car in fourth place of Mehdi Banani continues to close in. Lopez is want to get a move on here because after Muller's first race finish, Lopez is nowhere near Muller's Muller's first race finish. So yeah. at the end of the weekend, Muller would be king of the ring, <laughs> which is uh, yeah, the accolade well, they all want to walk away with. Well, they'll have a winner piece. So uh, I think maybe that's you know, Lopez doesn't worry too much about losing the odd point here. Plunging down the hill into bright shite. And then starting the climb now. Yes, his fiance Victoire watching Jose Maria Lopez. Loads of men in red watching the screens here. What's going to be interesting towards the end of the lap is what happens with Mehdi Banani and the Castrol Hondas. At the moment, Honda two and three, Banani in fourth, but he is well placed and could easily slip stream by. Jose Maria Lopez taking a little pause behind Quing Hua Ma or losing ground to him, one or the other. And they're closing on Bernani. In fact, Bernani has dropped right back off the two Hondas, and that's exactly what Tarquini wanted to see, or not see, rather. No Bernani in his mirrors. And look at Montero and Tarquini. Now together, Matt, they'll be quicker than they are on their own. They don't have to tow along Bernani, although look as they start to climb uphill. Bernani's Citroen just sucks them in, <laughs> going up there. Look at him, yeah. pull him in. It's they need to, they need to start working as a pair. Definitely not try and scrap with each other. Oh my goodness! This is like being a sprinter on a mountain stage with a hill climber behind you, just relentlessly closing, closing, closing. And Bernani from being nowhere at the carousel is right there, right there with the Hondas. And so too are Ma and Lopez. Behind our race leader, Ivar Muller in the white Citroen. A fantastic battle in prospect for second place. For the podium spots, we have at least five cars going for second or third. Thiago Montero and Gabriele Tarquini on the left of your shot in the Hondas. Then the red roof and the green and white colours of Mehdi Benani. The first of three Citroëns in a row. It's Benani, Quing Huama and Jose Maria Lopez. You have to say the Hondas look as though they've closed Muller down a wee bit through Again, that. Again, yes, Whether they do. Whether it's damp or Muller's playing it safe, but the Hondas are holding their own to the Citroëns through the uh, the technical section. Just get to the straight. There is, there is no substitute for horsepower, is Especially there? if it's a hill. Oh, Lopez right underneath Mars' back bumper again and just gets his nose out of the way. Ma, I think, catching him out there, being a little slower through that section than he expected. And Bernani, not quite close enough as we get to Flansgarten, to the Castrol Hondas in front. But again, there is a little climb up towards the mini carousel. And any time the road goes up, horsepower is going to count. From Coronel looking back at Huff. And behind him, Philippi, and behind him, you can see the yellow of Jat van Lagen's Lada Vesta. So is Huff going to be able to get by Coronel at the end of the lap? He's certainly close enough, Matt. If we saw the slipstream effect on lap one, we're going to see it again in lap two as they drop into the mini carousel and a mistake there from Coronel. The car a little wayward under braking. Huff now breathing in his exhaust fumes. Yeah, this next section is very critical onto the main straight. If Huffy can get a clean run onto here and a good slipstream. Oh, Carnell's done well. He's Yeah, but he's giving the toe, and speed. it's a mile-long straight. This is longer than anywhere at Monza. 
And here comes Yvonne Muller. Behind him, the two Castrol Hondas, and then Banani Ma. That's the battle for fourth place. Banani not close enough to challenge the Castrol cars. Here comes Ma, pulls himself out of the slipstream. He's got five or 600 RPM more and tucks back in front. And here comes Lopez. Is he going to have a run at Bonani? Maybe not here, but maybe on the Grand Prix loop. Oh, he's getting close as they get into the braking area, but he's not close enough. They swerve around through Hohenrein, and there's the Grand Prix circuit in front of them. Muller crosses the line at the end of lap two to go on to the final lap here as the race leader. And the gap is out from 0.8 to 1.8. Huff did get by Coronel, and Philippi and Van Lagen are closing in on Tom as well. Perversely, Tom's backed off the rear wing and is still losing places on the straight as Lopez goes outside, inside Bernani, hops the curb, and Mehdi Bernani avoids contact there with the championship leader, as you would hope he would. And really, Lopez there taking just a little bit of a liberty with the Moroccan driver, but trusting that they could run wheel to wheel because he made the move and then made it stick. I'll be critical, but that was a nice, neat... I'll be critical when I need to be or want, want to be, but that was a nice, neat move of Lopez. He went down the outside. Uh, Banani got a wee bit held up by Ma. He just put it down the outside, drove all the way around, and then he had the inside line and the apex for the next... Yeah. Oh, close to the tail of Ma's car. Inches. Yeah. Inches. And Banani did well to avoid contact there, Lopez. Picked up the spot. I think that's, that's more of a smile of relief. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It could all have gone really quite pear shaped there. So Lopez up to fifth. Where did Ivan finish in race one? Third, wasn't he? Third place. Yeah. So Ivan Muller leads here. Thiago Montero, Gabriele Tarquini still on the Grand Prix track here. Coming up to the Vidal chicane. Now these two cash cars are going to need to try and gap. Look how close oh. they all are now on this Grand Prix circuit. I tell you what, if we were racing on the Grand Prix circuit, the Citroens would not be getting away. This is Huff going by Coronel and Philippi going, do I follow Huff? Do I follow Tom? Which way am I going to go? How much room is left? Coming by the taxi firing and the... He's the getting close, isn't he? Entrance on the side, yeah. Well, Tom I wasn't going to roll over there and have his tummy tickled, was he? I thought almost Coronel almost backed out of it there. Whoa, Going hang on a minute. Up. We've got a race not for second, but for the lead here. Tiago Montero senses the chance, maybe, somehow, possibly, to pull something out on Ivan Muller. Muller's car looks as though it's sliding around a lot through mm. there. Now, has he done what Coronel has? Back the car off for minimum drag? If he has, he might be paying for it. He might be paying for it in tyre wear. He might be paying for it by Thiago being able to stay close through all the technical sections of the track. And maybe... Oh, close oh. enough, and that's Mar in the barriers. Or is it Lopez in the barriers? It is Mar. Big slide from Quing Hua Ma. The tail finally gave up and could not hang on to it any longer. And Ma in the barriers. Lopez goes by and breathes another sigh of relief, as does Victoire, and that means that Lopez is now up to fourth place. Never mind wow. them having the heart of their mouth. I was holding my breath at that point. Yeah, not as much as uh, change your trousers for Queen Hua Ma, I think. Here is the battle for victory on board with Yat Van Lagen. Here's, he had a lunge at Tom Coronel that didn't quite work out. I think he might have. All right, let's figure out where we are on the lap now. That's Mar. Oh, the rear goes on the just on the oh. corner entry. Oh, he gets away with it. Just kisses the barrier, both sides. Wow. Oh, no, maybe a bit of a heavier one on that side. Yeah. <laughs> Victoire, you need to stop watching these races. Go and find a book to read or something. It's as stressful outside the car as it is inside. And the Castrol Honda mechanics and all the Honda men here are wondering what else is happening so Tried to hold it four kilometers in that's early on isn't you it? Could, that could have been a lot worse than it was yes it was well, it could have been indeed. it's almost like he got on the he put a, his left rear wheel on the uh, that's on the paint on the outside as, as he turned in that's just before Flugplatz, isn't it that's early yeah. in the lap, and that, ooh, yeah, look how much it lifted the car. That's a big he old... He could have easily the spat, barriers. spat back across yeah, in front of absolutely. Lopez. Absolutely. Nearly collected Lopez, nearly collected Loeb as well. 
So the rescue team on site to drag him away because, of course, this is the last lap for our cars, but the track will be busy all weekend. Muller still now. very, very much under pressure. Yeah. Talk about under the gun. If Ivan has kept anything, he'd better produce it from the top hat soon because those two Hondas are close enough that they could both be looking at him down the long straight at the end of the lap. But we've got a long way to go before we get there. Muller and needs this win. He needs this win for the championship. Well, he's not going to get away down here, is he? This is the run down towards the lowest part of the track. Uh, we're past there now, oh, yeah, Martin, are, on the oh, run yeah. up. Up to Bergwerk. So you can see that Citroen just stretch its legs against the Hondas. Need to get and back yet, to the technical section. And yet now we're in top gear with Thiago. He's actually closing. Look, you can see that Ivan is not no. getting further away. He's getting a fraction closer. I mean, these Hondas are, are working as well as a pair here. Yeah. But Muller just manages to stretch his legs when they get into those high gears. Yeah. But it's tight and twisty before they get to dotting a her and the long final straight on the lap. Uh, Lopez is coming into the action as well now. Yes, so he is. You can see him in the background. Can't see him in the shot on the right. This there he is to as they get the to the carousel. A wee bit. Here the wheel spin trying to get scrabble for grip as they come out the carousel. Tiago has got to trust Gabrielli to sit behind him and allow them both to close on Muller. They could win this race if they don't squabble with each other. Lopez is coming, but Gabrielli might have to drop back and defend against him because there could be two Hondas on the podium here. Gabrielli is being caught by Lopez, and as Lopez gets behind the Honda mat, it's starting to slow Gabrielli. That extra car in his slipstream is causing drag on the Honda, but look on the twistier stuff again, Thiago Montero is closing on Ivan Muller. Yeah, Lopez is going to have someone. Gabrielli almost needs to back him way back in the technical section away from Montero, so can Montero can have a clear clear crack at Muller. Well, this is through Vipperman. They've just gone through Vipperman over the left-hander at Eschbach and Thiago Montero getting closer and closer to Ivan Muller. Lopez a little closer to the third-place car of Gabriele Tarquini as they sweep right through Brunchen, though. Thiago is nearly close enough to Muller. He's got to stay there somehow through these high-speed sweepers. It's almost touching distance, isn't it? It's so fast and so close. Now Muller stretches his legs from Flansgarten up towards Schwalbenschwanz. But again, Thiago closing in the left-hander. Down into the mini carousel. And Thiago is right with Ivan Muller. Has the Citroen got enough grunt and enough slipperiness down the straight as they exit dotting a her Tiago Montero is where he needs to be but then for third so is Jose Maria Lopez and Muller seems to have got a little bit of air in front of him here we go on the straight Muller from Montero Montero is not going to catch him so watch the car at the back of the group Jose Maria Lopez he's right behind Gabriele Tarquini Tarquini has got no defense Lopez has got the toe and the engine power to go right by for third. And I don't think the Montero is going to catch Muller before they get to the end of the lap. Here well, comes Muller. He's already gone by him. Montero got by Muller and Muller repasses the same as you do at that's, Spa. That's and Lopez. Lopez that's is Lopez. Right. Was that Lopez went by them both? Unbelievable. So Ivan Muller is going to lead out to the final corner. Jose Maria Lopez jumped both Citra and Lopez both could win Hondas. It. And Lopez is looking at Muller for Vinci, but it's a 1 2 for Citra and a 3 4 for Honda. Wow, what a finale! Thiago Montero and Gabriele Tarquini could both have ended up on the podium, might almost have won it, but we saw their mat. Undoubtedly, the power of the Citroen engine just hauling them through the air faster than their rivals can manage. Yeah, never mind drag or anything like that. I think uh, 
the Honda boys need to go back to the drawing board on the um, just need some more grunt. They need wow. more GGs. Wow, wow, wow. If I'm all out victorious, Jose Maria Lopez second, Tiago Montero makes it onto the podium in third. performance matters.